Welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another hot one here in Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan, and we're out here in Haona today. And I'm going to go show you a World War II crashed plane here, uh, halfway to Medang. Get started because it is like over 100 degrees in here. All right, introduce my low fuel or my low idle. The NG, or the NG is coming up over 35%, the ITT is coming over 600, and peaks out at 6, 8. Regenerator on, got my prop forward, V2, alternator, and the aux. Right, fuel cap fan selectors are good, controls, and pause. We'll turn Betty off for this one, so she's not yelling at us, our train awareness system. 20 degrees of flap to get that going. Our switches and instruments were empty today with 940 pounds of fuel. So we're going to go up to uh, 1 1,000 on the way back or down to Medang today. We're empty today, but our weight is 5,600 because I've got a, quite a bit of fuel on board. So our rotate speed is going to be 56, and if we had to come back in, 65. Ups are set, indicated, and verified at 20. Get our trim on the way down there, and let's go ahead and call up Medang. Medang 65, nine or eight, November Tango Echo Taxi. All stations, Hauna, 122. Medang, Tango Echo, Taxi, Hauna, Medang. Medang 65, nine or eight, November Tango Echo Taxi, Hauna, Medang, one POB. November Tango Echo, Medang, copy taxi, no reported traffic. November Tango Echo. Now you can probably see some of these grass clumps out here on the runway. This particular runway, if you just touch your brakes, it just starts ripping up sheets of grass, which can get really dangerous on landing, but I just walked the runway and threw tons of them off. Someone else had landed here and didn't do that. So there was like a couple piles that were like a foot tall of just dead grass. Oh, don't really want to hit one of those with my front tire. Looks like they also just dug up a new drainage dish, which is really nice. Hopefully that will help keep some of the water off during rainy season. All right, trimming a board. Our trim is good. All right, we're gonna be we're pretty light today, so we've got one, two, three cones up there. I'm going to be 40 knots by the third cone on the right. Otherwise, full reverse, heavy braking. If going off, cut off, pull off, and shut off. Hit my emergencies, crack my door, master's off. After takeoff, we're going to pitch for 85. Consider PL immediately. PL doesn't work, which is our emergency power lever, which is just a fuel override. Then we're going to go feather. Really, there's just swamp and river here, so. We're going to do a right-hand turn to Swamp and Slash River and see if there's any sandbars around. Full flaps, 80. Emergencies, crack my door, masters, and I'll pull off and shut off. All right. Well, our lights are on, our bypasses. And bypass, we just did our SAR. 34 degrees, so 1470 for 1520. Ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Take 56, 1470. All right, so I'm just locking my elbow in, get my nose off the ground as much as I can. There's 40, continuing. There's 54, there's airborne. Nose over, get some speed up. And climb out at 85 knots with 20 degrees of flaps. Well, it's going to be a really, really nice flight down to Medang. It's an hour and a half flight, so more than likely my wing cameras are probably going to be dead by the time I get there. But I've got spare batteries for these ones in here, so hopefully uh, I can record this whole flight down here for you and show you this uh, Japanese World War II small bomber plane. All right, now we're at a good altitude. Just passing almost a thousand feet. MSL, we'll do 10 degrees of flaps. Over 90 and still climb, we'll go zero degrees and bring our prop back to 2000 RPM. And let our I 
ITT kind of settle on its own. It's going down on its own, and it should be right around 7.20 for our climb. Autopilot going, and turn TAWS back enabled. Now that we got autopilot on, ending light off, engine inlet back to normal, and our igniters are turned off. We're doing 6598 November Tango Echo departure. November Tango Echo, November Tango Echo departed Hauna time 17, tracking 098 on climb 11000. We'll report again time 47 ops normal. November Tango Echo copied 11000, AQNH 1011. 1011, November Tango Echo. The reason I am just doing a an ops normal call here in a half hour is just because my next point is going to be a whole 47 minutes. So you're supposed to be reporting every 30 minutes. So rather than go the full 47, I'm just going to call them in 30 minutes. And then again, once I get to my halfway point. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the map right now. This is using the app for flight with our own um, user content. So basically we've just uploaded our own maps in here for Papua New Guinea. We've got overlays for like our IFR charts as well for all of our routes to all of our specific locations. But anyways, we just left Hauna right here and we came earlier from Wewak and now, let me zoom out here, I am coming down here to Medang. So I'm just going to come in like this, right down to Medang. So right about halfway is like a Japanese float plane bomber. It's like a two-seater, kind of like a B-25 size, so it's a pretty small plane. And I had found it last year. Someone had told me about kind of sort of the location it was, and I was out that location like four or five times in a day just doing shuttles. So I was like, man, I'm just going to use this opportunity. Every time I head back, we go right over that area. So. I was able to find it, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to be able to share it with you guys because I think it's pretty cool. I'll leave the the coordinates, if I can find it today, I'll leave the coordinates down in the description if you're interested in flying on your own home flight simulator and you want to see if it's on the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Um, I don't know if it is or not. It might be. But anyways, um, check out the coordinates down below or if you want, just want to look it up on Google Earth or whatever. All right, so as you can see, we're just about halfway to Medang now, which is just about, we've got another nine more minutes before we get to this plane, so. Vertical track. There's Betty letting us know it's now time to go down. I've already pre-set it up to go down just to 500 feet, and we're gonna go on down at, I think, 1,200 feet per minute. So I can get down there really quick, and then jump back up to 11,000 because I don't really wanna fly down there because it's so hot. So there's two lakes here. Well, they're not really lakes. They're more just swamps. They don't even look like lakes. I think they just flood. But if you are wanting to fly this on your flight simulator and you want to check this out, there's two lakes, and it's the one that's closer to Medang. And in the lake itself, like, if this is the whole lake here and you're going to Medang, it's kind of on, like, the two-thirds of the way up here. So hopefully... Hopefully it shows up in the game. Um, if not, hopefully I can find it today. Otherwise, this will be quite the disappointment, won't it? On one of my flights from WeWAC back to Garoka, one of these days I'm going to show you there's actually a B-25 wreck um, kind of on the way out that way. I don't exactly remember exactly where it is. I'll have to ask somebody else. We had it saved on our GPS and stuff, but somehow it got deleted off. But it's pretty cool, it's just in a big grass field and there's kind of a tree kind of growing a little bit right next to it. Anyways, one of these days I'll take you on that flight as well. That's a pretty awesome flight. There is a lot of World War II history here. I don't really know much about it, but there's a wreck down in Medang. Um, I think it's, a, I don't know what it actually is. It might be a B-25, it might be a little bit bigger though. I thought it was bigger, more like a, I don't know. I'm not gonna say, because I might be wrong. And then there's another one, uh, South of Garoka. There's another Japanese one out in Medang that I've been to. And then there's just a ton out in the ocean as well. I don't know all the wrecks, but I know out by Kabyang, there's a lot of wrecks. Down in Medang, there's a few wrecks as well. So yeah, if you ever get here to go diving, 
it's incredible here for one, but they do have a lot of World War II stuff. There was like a small Japanese ship out uh, by Madang as well. I don't know, well, yeah, a small, small ship. Also, if you guys are looking for this, um, it is kind of on the south side, closer to the mountains. Um, if you were to split it up into three sections, it's probably like on the third mark and two thirds of the way into it, I think. That's how I remember it. It's been about a year since I've been out here, so. All right, so it looks like the grass is a lot higher than it was last year. But I think I remember it being directly ahead of me, so hopefully I can find this thing pretty quick. Last time I had to fly over a little bit to figure out where is this stupid thing. And I'll throw a photo up on the screen on what I think it is. I'm not 100% sure, but the shape of it and everything else, it might have been flying out of Long Island down by Medang area because it had floats, I, I don't know. All right, there it is, right off of my wing. Blow on down here. Just sitting out in a field. All right, I'm gonna go get some flaps in. I pass, put my prop forward, help slow down, and 20 degrees of flaps. Keep it at 85 knots. Caution, terrain. Oh yes, Caution, thank you, Betty. terrain. Betty always knows best. Pretty sure it's a Japanese float plane. Not 100% sure. I'm not a professional. So, hey, if you know what this plane is, or you know of another website, I'm sure they're out there that's saying exactly what it is and everything like that, well, then you can leave a link down below in a comment so other people can find your handiwork. All right, well, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I'll leave the coordinates down below. All right, let's go ahead and climb on up. Back to 11,000 feet as quickly as we can because it's hot down here. All right, 85 and over. We'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Our prop is already full forward at this moment. Two degrees of flaps. When we're over 90 and climbing, we're over 100 right now, and then we'll bring our prop back down to 2,000 RPM. It's a little bumpy down here. We're doing 6598 November Tango Echo position. November Tango Echo, Medango ahead. November Tango Echo, a beam Tomo time 08. Estimating Medang time 51. November Tango Echo, confirm, estimate Medang 51. Affirmative 51, November Tango Echo. Remember Tango Echo, not about Ocean 1 1000. No report to traffic. November, take a look. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick back up on our descent into Medang because, well, the next 40 minutes is probably gonna be pretty boring. All right, now 35 miles to run Medang. Let's go ahead and get our ATIS. Medang Airport, information Charlie. Time, 0230 Zulu. Runway 07. Wind, 070 degrees, five knots. Hey, I've got my altimeter set up as well as my standby altimeter down here. 1008, we're information Charlie. So at 25 miles, we're gonna go ahead and call up the tower. Looking ahead out there, we've got clouds, probably we can wiggle our way down there. But if it was an IFR day, what I can show you what we would do is we have our GPS arrival. So right now I'm on a heading of 103, so that's how I can tell. So I've got 090 here to 126. So as long as my heading that I'm on is in between that, this is the correct chart that I need to be using. So I've already got my tower set up here, another seven miles I'm gonna call tower. But 
Right now I'm at 1, 1,000. So up here in the corner, my minimum safe is going to be 11,000 for this area. Once we get down, or once we get to 45 miles, we can go down to 7,500 feet. So actually, no, that's 50 nautical miles. I'm only 35, 30 miles now. So basically, I could go down to 7,500. I'm just going to go ahead and start my descent now, and well as well as turn my altimeter setting. But if it was an IFR day, I would basically only turn it to my minimum descent altitude of 2,000 feet. But they're saying scatter 2,000 once we get there, but I'll leave it at 2,000 feet just for the exercise. Vertical track. Anybody letting us know it's time to go down, I've already set up my descent profile at 1,000 feet per minute, and that will get us right at the field at, at 500 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it all the way down to 1,000. But if for any reason we had to go through any of these clouds, which I highly doubt today, um, we're at 25 miles to 15 miles, or we have to be at 6,000 feet. So I'm going to do my best to wiggle through them so I can remain VFR and not have to go off of this. Because this really doesn't bring you down. It brings you down to 4,300 feet just 10 miles out, and then you're going to have to crank it down and just go down real fast. So. Tower November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, good day. November Tango Echo, good day. Good day, November Tango Echo, two five miles to the west, passing 9,300 on descent. Your circuit time, 49er information, Charlie. November Tango Echo, Roger, train second left base, runway 07, report left base. Track report left base, 07, November Tango Echo. All right, let's just start up our checklist. Our selectors, our fuel selectors are both on. Our brakes are good. Our TAWs will leave enabled for now, in case for some reason we had to go through a cloud. And we have our pilot on. So we try to keep our TAWs enabled when we have our autopilot on so that our head's not down, it's disabled and potential of running into something and it not aware, letting us know. Hello, Sierra Delta, and confirm the tracking via SACA. Hi, from SACA, Lobao, Hello, Sierra Delta. All right, we'll throw our landing light on as we're just now getting into their airspace here. We'll do our inlet when we slow down a little bit. Our aux page is going to give us our weight. We're at our landing estimate. Weight, landing weight is going to be 5100. My slowest airspeed is going to be 61 knots. I won't come in that slow because really there's no point in coming in that slow in a place like Medang. All right, so it looks like what I'm going to do is just autopilot off. Come over here. I can see all the way down through here. I can actually see down to the coastline. So I'm just going to go around these clouds so I can continue my descent so I don't have to just drop down on the other side of these or even go through them. We've got our V-Ref set up. Pop and harness, can't, we can do a harness, can't do prop yet. So that's really all that we can do right now until we get probably within about five miles. So while we're coming in, let me just show you the strip chart here for Medang. It's 5,151 5 feet. We'll be coming in from this direction on 07, so we'll enter into a left base for 07, and that's where we'll report. Uh, more than likely, there might be some birds on the runway, so that's always something that I keep in mind as I am coming in here. Usually on this end of the runway, there's usually lots of hawks that just like to hang around the end of the runway. And on the other end, they have the flying fox, the big bats that have like wingspans of like probably four and a half feet. They're really big. I hit one once on my wing. Thankfully, I just clipped his wing as he was banking and it just, yeah, probably broke his wing and he went crashing down. I didn't see, but it would have been cool though, right? More than likely, we'll have a decent amount of turbulence through these mountains usually. Today, it's only two knots right now. I mean, it was like 15 knots just like five minutes ago at 11,000. So I'm going to just keep my speed at 160 knots indicated. That's going to give me 22 knots of margin before I get to my never exceed speed. Good traffic is Kilo Delta, just exit runway 07 for Tokwa. Copy, 
Kilo Sierra Delta, November Tango Echo. Kilo Sierra Delta, traffic, November Tango Echo, Kodiak, inbound, from the west, past 2 5 miles at time 41, tracking for left base, second at 49. Copy traffic, Kilo Sierra Delta. He's heading out to Tokoa, He's, which is way out that way, across the ocean, probably like 300 miles away, in the wrong direction, but that's all right. All right, autopilot is off. I'm just going to hold my altitude till I get crest over these clouds, and then I'll make a right-hand turn down. Let's hit our OBS button, turn to 07. That'll give me a nice little line for my runway, so I know kind of if I'm perpendicular to it or parallel or whatever else with it. All right, I'm seeing the coast again now, which is nice. Our descent again. Gotta go ahead and bring my altitude selector down to 500. That's where I wanna be turning my final. And then I can adjust my descent rate to bring my little cyan arc where right where I want it to be. Zero miles out, our landing light is on. We'll do our bypass here in a second. Whoa. But I mean, it gets kind of bumpy every once in a while. You don't know when to expect it. Right around this cloud, we're going to make our right-hand turn so we can start heading towards the field again. We can kind of enter into a left base for zero seven. Now there's nine knots going this way. Two seconds ago there was not two knots going this way, and five minutes ago there was 15 knots going this way. So yeah, I've got like a wind shear level right there, and then it also goes over the mountains, which just makes the air tumble. So that's why we have pretty strong turbulence sometimes, not always, but sometimes over the mountains. If you guys are interested in flying into Medang on your flight simulator, the ICAO code is Alpha Yankee Mike Delta. So you could fly in from there up to Garok or wherever else. I have a lot of those kind of flights on my Patreon page. And if you're interested in helping support this channel, um, I have a lot of t-shirts on my website. I'll leave a link just down below if you want to check those out. And I have some really cool sunglasses and whatnot on there. So check that out if you guys want to. I'm going to go ahead and report my base now. Heading tower November Tango Echo, left base 07. November Tango Echo, runway 07, Crystal Land. Crystal Land 07, November Tango Echo. Alright, let's push our prop forward. Pause is good, our lights and inlet. Inlet is good. We need to go around, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73, reset torque 740. Passing 2000 on climb 195. Prop and harness landing clearance done 10 degrees of flaps below 138. Hello, Sierra Delta Roger. 25 miles, contact meeting on 120 on 120 HF 653. Copy 25 miles, Madang 120. Alright, 20 degrees of flaps below 120 knots. Tiny bit high right now. Because I am still a little bit high, full flaps. Come in at 70 knots. Uh, I'm going to Quebec. Uh, four knots up, request taxi runway 07, information Charlie. Far number Quebec, taxi and hold short runway 07. 500. Taxi and hold short runway 07, up for number Quebec. Actually, I'm going to keep my speed up a little bit just because there's a plane taxi and <laughs> wanting to take off, so I'll just keep my speed up. Get in here as quickly as I can so that he can start back to accent. All right, checklist is complete. All right, we're continuing. I don't see any birds. Speed up just so that he's getting ready to roll out here. A low idle. On Mickey back, taxi. Correction, enter backtrack and line up runway 07. 
Delta Vectrex and line up on the 07, up on the Mikey Wing. Alright guys, this is Majang. Hope you guys did enjoy that flight. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed even seeing that World War II plane. That was pretty awesome, I think. I enjoy things like that. Anyways. I think Tau Alpha, Tango Bravo. Anyways, if you did enjoy this flight, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel grow. It helps, you know, push it through the algorithm so that other people get to see my stuff as well. So leave a comment down below if you did enjoy it. And uh, consider subscribing. I put out videos twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. So thanks, guys, for taking the time to watch. And welcome to Medang. All right, shutting down, air, air going again, turn those off, all of our lights off, our fuel pump, our auxiliary bus, generator, alternator, make sure this is all the way back to idle, and cut off, below 38% feather it, and turn off the uphill valve. Thanks again guys, have a great one.